Well, good. So, uh, let me start, because uh, Professor Lobo did already a beautiful overview. Let me start uh, with uh, this study. Why did this study? Uh, no, because we had uh, some requirement for, um, we had uh, an occasion in Italy to have founding uh, B study, and we had, uh, uh, at that time, uh, the SAFE study was, uh, um, was uh, quite new, and uh, we looked uh, at the sepsis, uh, possible advantages of using albumin, and I said, okay, well, let's use albumin for that, and add something else. Because there was Jean-Louis Vincent uh, had uh, published a paper saying, uh, if you keep the albumin level over 30 grams per liter in the next, after the resuscitation phase, uh, the resuscitation phase uh, we may have uh, an improvement in terms of organ failure, and maybe mortality. Well, I don't care about the mortality because everybody died at the end. Okay, so I recommend you to care about the mechanism, to understand the mechanism, why this could be good, why this could be bad. And the survival is a uh, side effect of this uh, understanding, which uh, distinguishes the doctors from the computer. Now, Having that, uh, we try to put together these two, uh, these two information. Let's see the resuscitation phase, uh, and let's keep the albumin uh, for uh, 24, uh, 28 days uh, in uh, uh, try to reach uh, greater than 30. So we had a patient with uh, severe sepsis or septic shock. At that time, the difference uh, was the septic shock was severe, was a severe sepsis, plus uh, or hypotension or a need uh, of a cardioactive drug to sustain the mineral weight pressure. Then volume replacement, and uh, the replacement was based uh, on uh, the goal-directed therapy, which is a river. That was exactly the same we did 10 years before uh, river, was to maintain SVO2 around uh, to to goal as a 70, mineral weight pressure greater than 65, if I remember correctly. And uh, in one group, this was used just with crystalloids. And we did not make any difference between crystalloids. Everybody used the crystalloids they wanted. And we had at the time in Italy two kinds of crystalloids, uh, where a ringer lactate uh, and uh, saline. And I think the proportion was almost 50-50, but we do not have this data. And the other group, we had a crystal loss plus albumin, 20% albumin, because we were using 20%. But if I use 20% with 4 liters, it has to use 5%, because uh, um, this was difficult to be the reviewer understood this uh, simple concept of the concentration. Anyway. We did, uh, we went to this, and the protocol will say, if in the day number one, after the resuscitation phase, when you have reached your goal, the albumin is below 30, is greater than 30, okay, stay there, observe. If it's low between 25 and 30, we were given in three hours uh, 60 grams of albumin, if not, um, 200 uh, in three hours, or or uh, 300 milliliters, or 60 grams of albumin, if we're lower than 25 grams per liter, and this uh, for 28 days. So we enrolled 900 900 patients in uh, both group. Uh, it took uh, four years. These these studies are very boring, you know. It's a lot of uh, organization, take data, and then the follow-up of the patient is a nightmare. And we were absolutely mm, satisfied that over 900 patients, we lost at the follow-up uh, 14 patients uh, in, uh, in a both group. Lost means we were not able even to recognize in which continent the, the people ended at the end of the story. Anyway. We analyzed 888 and 893. And uh, let's see, uh, the first, the initial resuscitation, we had a mean arterial place, pressure, you know, it looks very similar, but we have some significant difference. 
for uh, somebody of you who love uh, who adore the statistics uh, say okay that's great significant i don't know uh, if uh, as a great critical mean, clinical meaning to have two three milliliters of mercury of difference in mineral weight pressure so these are the two curves you judge as you want we have a couple two or three uh, at the day one uh, point higher in central venous pressure in the albumin group and uh, there is no doubt that we were able to reach not the in a balance fluid balance of zero in the group of albumin earlier than in a group with the crystalloids all together one means because in the day first the amount the total amount of fluids were exact, exactly the same 4.5 liters in both group but that means that we have some oncotic effect of albumin but extreme is low extremely low and uh, I would like you to think a little bit about the story of the oncotic and osmotic pressure because everybody has teachers since one of our students uh, okay I have uh, albumin the albumin suck the water keep the water in the vessels if I lose the barrier disaster good now if you look at the liver the albumin cross the liver 100 percent normal liver without uh, any osmotic any barrier if you look at the lung which is very delicate organ 60 percent of the albumin cross without any problem if you look at the muscle part of the albumin get uh, normally out of the capillaries if you look at the brain no in the system nervous system we have a very strong barrier so that means the permeability of albumin is something I have a lot of circulating albumin the album is not made to stay in the vessels but is made to be delivered without any reserve from the liver to the vessel to circulate to get out in the station and to go back I see the album as a sort of little soldier we circulate in the extracellular space and they stay around for days before to disappear so the classical view of this osmotic pressure I think be careful let me give another example no no this is uh, I waste too much time anyway when we looked at the mortality 90 day mortality very similar in the two groups now we have in this patient in, in this group uh, we have 1,000 patients more than 1,000 patients uh, were a little bit more severe and the septic shock the mortality combining together the group was 46 percent compared to the severe sepsis in which the mortality was 38 percent so for sure we had a, a group which was more severe and in our intention when we designed the study severe sepsis and septic shock were two different levels of severity but we did not declare in, um, in, in, in the method. So the reviewer, whatever analysis you do, separating after the work this, uh, becomes uh, um, post-hoc analysis. And in our intention, uh, when we designed the study, severe sepsis and septic shock were two different levels of severity. But we did not declare in, um, in, in, in the method. So the reviewer, whatever analysis you do, separating after the work this uh, becomes uh, um, post-hoc analysis and the post-hoc analysis for a reviewer is as a David for a priest okay but if I took the post analysis the post-hoc analysis and we consider only the patient with the septic shock it happens that uh, we have a more uh, some uh, 
some advantage which uh, happens to be significant, 6.3, in a patient with albumin and, and compared to the patient without albumin. In a randomized study, to have, uh, starting with this kind of mortality, to have a 6.3, 6.7 of difference, we need 1,000 patients. 6% is an enormous amount. If you look at the randomized study in oncology or in cardiology, when they have a 2% that is a champagne, but they have a single disease, so enroll 10,000 patients. To enroll 2,000 patients in a group in intensive care with a syndrome is really a nightmare. So mm, be careful when you pretend to have the P000 and so on. Then we went to see the, uh, the, a little bit more in depth this patient with septic shock. And what we found, that the septic shock had more uh, fluids than the patient without septic shock, which is uh, quite obvious. And uh, if we look at the different, uh, the map, the lactate, SVO2, uh, you can look uh, if touch the line, uh, yes or not, but quite clearly. Each one, all these variables uh, would describe the pathophysiology behind the shock, at least a variable which are involved in the basic mechanism, all seems to be in a patient with septic shock, uh, moved uh, toward the possible advantage uh, of uh, albumin. And the uh, same thing here. Let's tell you that when a patient has uh, uh, a middle severity in the septic shock, we have more middle and less severity in severe patient anyway, uh, you have some advantage with albumin. And uh, meta-analysis. Everybody adores the meta-analysis. Because you save time and you say, okay, we put together 100 papers will be better than one paper. And what do you read? The conclusion of the meta-analysis, no, of the abstracts of the meta-analysis. Because to read all the paper costs too much trouble, okay? Unfortunately, meta-analysis, no, as Professor Lobo said before, uh, take the meta-analysis album, it is very funny. The first one, the Cochrane albumin, kill you. Second meta-analysis, sec albumin is indifferent. Third meta-analysis, third albumin is of advantage. So be careful with the meta-analysis because they put together everything. And personally, I hate the meta-analysis because, uh, um, I mean, to do one damn study, you spend uh, five years. To do a meta-analysis, you spend five minutes. You just press the knob of the computer, somebody else prepared uh, all the program before, and you had great. Okay, impact factor up. Good. And this meta-analysis, no, this was what was my friend Brett no? in, uh, from Imperial College in London. No? He was waiting the Albion study to, to, to fill uh, this, uh, this uh, meta-analysis. And they concluded that, well, there is some signal toward the septic shock, uh, you may favor the septic shock. So the problem is, who cares about the... Uh, there are some reasonable argument to see that albumin may be of some advantage compared to other fluids. Because, my dear friends, you have uh, a box with a lot of bottles. You have the saline, you have the gelatin, you have the mustard, we have syrup, we have uh, everything that you can use in septic shock. And uh, you have to choose uh, the one which is uh, less dangerous or possibly of some benefit. So we have just to have a comparative process to give these poor patients uh, in these conditions. And uh, why the albumin should work? And we have a lot of properties. The oncotic pressure, I think, is, uh, careful, irrelevant. 
for the reason I told you before. And let's go home, take a piece of paper, and invent one model. You have five liters with uh, osmotic pressure 305. That means crystal loys give you 300. Five milliosmol, which is already a lot, due to the proteins, which is called oncotic pressure. Then you have 15 liters in the other side with 300. Let's see, I don't have proteins over there. And I have a barrier. Now let's see, I destroy the barrier. I leave the protein, all the protein, to equilibrate between the two compartments. You know how much water is moved? It's no more than half a liter. And this is physics. And this is biology. But we continue to past and copy, past and copy from some concept. And we keep this concept as dogma. During the acute phase, the, the oncotic properties are uh, less relevant. It's not as the during the normal, very normal surgery or uh, in a normal patient. Uh, in a, it's not so important. This, I think, is, uh, is quite important. Because we have a lot uh, of uh, these damn uh, oxygen radicals, which are one uh, of the nightmare of uh, the intensive care. Because everybody speaks about oxygen radicals, but very few have an idea of what you are talking about, what they do, how they last. Now, the oxygen radicals are then instable molecules that ten tend to steal electrons from whatever molecule they found in their course. The first molecule, a radical, I'm a radical. The first molecule, uh, molecule I met, I steal one electron and I create another radical while I rest in peace. I am being neutralized. Albumin has the possibility to give is a part of the halpumin, which has the group SH, has the possibility to give the electrons to the radicals, to the very dangerous radicals. They are kept in, in peace. The albumin consumes part of its thiol group, but may be restored by other antioxidant, antioxidant mechanism. Our body is an antioxidant machine because we fully continue to produce oxygen radicals. To produce water, starting with the oxygen, the end of the respiratory chain, we produce a lot of oxygen radicals because we give one electron a time. So we are very well organized. And Albumi, this little soldier, are around looking a discontinuous production of oxygen radicals. I don't go in through this one, but you see on the right, you have human serum albumin one. What means is the albumin, a little soldier, which is perfect, is equipped with these weapons, this is a thiol group, SH, ready to compensate for the oxygen radicals. Then I have human serum albumin two. Is a a status of oxidation which may be recovered. So the album can be restored to a condition one, SH. Then I have uh, the human serum album in number three. The soldier in this, for this action, is dead. Cannot be recovered. The group SH has completely and irreversibly oxidized. Now, these are albumin one, albumin two, albumin three. Look, we are giving albumin. Here, there are different kinds of albumin that you can give from different factory. Look at the lab two. The normal albumin, good, is 9%. 48% is reversibly oxidized, 43% is done. 
The other one has a 30% is good, 50%. So and so, 20% instead of 40% is completely oxidized. And uh, there is no firm that check this one. So we looked uh, at 60 patients. We look at the oxidation status of the 60 patients. And you see, there is, a, I don't want to spend much time because I do not really know what this meant. But I can tell you that some patient, maybe the concentration of albumin is decent, and they have 60% of the albumin which has been already consumed. And at this point, you can say, okay, if the action of the albumin is the one of controlling the, extra corp the extracellular fluid in condition in which have the oxygen radicals, the nitrosylation of the NO damping is are completely activated during sepsis, the albumin, if I put this new albumin, possibly not of the, because we don't know that, huh? possibly good albumin, or sometimes maybe have some advantage. And I would arrive, I don't want to go in the details here, but just to give you this one, which a little bit summarized, that you see that, because are very few patients, 60 patients only, 30 and 30, because it's extremely expensive, it, uh, we don't, do not have money enough to, to support uh, the, um, the, the, a complete study. It's just a proof of the concept, uh, but it's already only with a very few patients, it's quite clear that the patient who had uh, more severe sepsy or the patient who died more had uh, the amount of uh, albumin oxidized, uh, which, is, uh, which is increased. So I think there is a lot to be understood uh, about the biology of what you are doing. The administered albumin can be already oxidized, and we don't have information about that. Greater is the oxidative stress, greater is the oxidation. And greater is the oxidation, greater is, lower is the capability to support a further stress. Crystalloids and albumin to the patient seems to respond a little bit different. But this is very early to say. I know that there is, a, no, I know. We in November, December, we will start with another study in Germany, which apparently is as the albios, but concentrated only in patients with uh, septic shock. And a similar study will be started the next year in Italy too. So I think after 25 years, uh, no, I hope a little less years, <laughs> because the German are very, you know, very precise, more than Italian. Huh? Uh, I, I think we could have uh, some question. For the moment, and this is my personal opinion, if I have a series of bottles and I want to sell and I want to give the one which has less danger and possibly most benefit, is the use of albumin because uh, because is what the biology and the, the sound mechanism we know of uh, tell us. The last word about the starches. I mean, starches are foreign bodies, are little foreign bodies which may stay and be found after ten years. Of course, if I have a 20 years young trauma patient and I have to give one liter, who cares? The advantages are great. The poor selling saved far millions of people than the patient who killed. But if I have alternative, why to expose the most fragile size of the patient of our population, maybe with some creatinine too and so on, to an a risk which may be easily avoided just choosing the right bottle. Thank you for the attention.